John in Bangkok writes, in theory, oh, don't you love it? <laughs> I love it. We start out with in theory. It seems that fiber optic connections offer great advantages over Ethernet and USB cables, both in terms of cost, the availability, and the ability to deliver a clean signal at a distance with lower noise. I've noticed that some manufacturers have begun to add this connection to their equipment and other companies offer Ethernet to fiber optic converters. I went with fiber optic to connect my music server to my streamer in two different rooms, and it seems to offer a modest improvement. But I've been wrong before. Hey, join the club. <laughs> is there any reason that adoption of fiber optic connections is not being adopted by the audio manufacturers more quickly? Yeah, there's probably a couple of reasons. First off, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of fiber. Uh, we happen to be working right in the middle with our chief engineer, Bob Stather, at the moment on a new product. We're always working on new products, okay? And we are, you know, we're really big on galvanic isolation, meaning between noisy digital things and clean, quiet analog things, we don't want to have any touching of the grounds, no electrical connections. Everything has to just sort of float through the air between one and the other so we don't induce any noise. That's a big deal, right? And fiber optics is actually a great way because obviously there is no electrical connection when you're just using light to transfer data. But it isn't quite that simple. And one of the reasons we haven't added that into our internal guts of these products that we're futzing with is because the transceivers transmitters and the receivers of that have issues. They're not perfect. And two-way communication is difficult. The more we look into it, the, uh, unless we go to some extraordinary lengths, there are much better solutions that are less expensive, that are more timing correct, that we can handle jitter better. So can it be done with fiber optics? Absolutely it isn't as easy as it sounds. It Just trust me on that. So, in general though, as I mentioned, light as a medium has no opportunity for any kind of connection between the two, and that's really good. Why manufacturers don't do more of it, like the toss link? Well, first off, imagine if we as a manufacturer spent the capital to go out and develop a new optical connection. That would take a lot, hundreds of thousand dollars, out of the range, out of the scope of a company our size. I mean, we just, we don't have the manpower or the bandwidth to go design new connections. So we would, like every other company in our industry, we'd have to go out and find something that already exists and then implement it. And if we do that, which we've considered, it would likely only work with PS Audio equipment, right? Because nobody else is doing it. So take about, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago when we introduced the idea of using an HDMI connector to transfer I squared S data. I squared S data is the data that is inside of a transport or a DAC. That's the native way that digital audio data travels and it has separate data lines, clock lines, all that stuff. If, if you see a CD player or a transport, it, well, they never come with I2S outputs, that native thing. They always multiplex it down. Then you go out coax or AES EVU on a balanced cable or on a toss link. Well, that's all this I2S, these, I think it's five channels all get multiplexed down to a single thing and then taken back out. So we thought, you know, a much better way to do this is just keep it out. And this is something our, our good friend, Doug Goldberg, who you'll be hearing more about, he's been working with us lately and I'm really, really excited to have Doug on the team. Uh, Doug used to be the, the head of engineering for Northrop Grumman, this little defense company out there in Chicago, you know. And, and he doesn't talk about what he did. 
<laughs> one of those guys have to kill you, right? And, and Doug was the first one that ever, you know, came up with the idea that I know of uh, for, for put, and I think he used like a, an ethernet connector or something. But anyway, we decided let's use an HDMI connector. We'll come up with a standard, which Bob Stather, our chief engineer, did, and put it on the back of our equipment so that if you want, and you want better sound, you use PS Audio's HDMI connector, but it doesn't have HDMI going through it. It has I squared S. And the connector and the cable just happen to be readily available, convenient things. Today, I would say probably 10, 15 manufacturers has, have adopted our I2S standard. And that's great. And we're very, very pleased to have shared that with the world. But that's the sort of thing that takes years to get going. And we don't want to make products that only work with PS Audio gear. I mean, as a manufacturer, we want to be compatible with as many other manufacturers as we possibly can. So long-winded answer, but fiber? Yeah, I wish actually everything was connected with fiber and we had stuck with that and perfected it, but it didn't happen.